Hello gamers, do you know this game? This is Lone Wolves. This is a new two-player trick-taking game coming to Gen Con 2024, and I am super excited to tell you about it. Lone Wolves is the re-implementation of Four Clans Conflict. This is one of the best two-player trick-taking games I've ever played, and one of my favorite two-player games of all time. But this was a few years ago, this is, this year, the hot newness. So the question is, does it live up to the hype? Do I still like it? Is it still for me? What secrets lie within this odd name of lone, singular, wolves, plural? Let's find out. Now, before we begin, I do want to mention that Lone Wolves was provided to me by the publisher for review. The publisher, Wonderful World Board Games, comes from Taiwan, where I lived for 18 years prior to moving back to the States. In fact, if you want to know more about Taiwan games, check out this link here to see my top 20 board games from Taiwan. And with that, let's go to Lone Wolves. Ah! And here is Lone Wolves. Let's do a quick unboxing here. Very, very quick. Ah, there we go. You'll see here are all the tokens that I punched out, put into this plastic bag. Here are the cards. And here is the main board. Now this main board will unfold like an accordion. And that's it, that's the components. Now the game did come with an insert, but I had the cards were here with the insert. And then you put this on top. And then these were all in a punch board spruce here. But once you punched everything out, it became really difficult to fit everything back into the box. So I had to throw the insert away, put the board here, put the, put the cards here, put the tokens in a nice bag that could kind of keep them kind of flat. And that would allow me to fit everything in here in the nice box. Here we are set up for a full game of Lone Wolves. I've given each player 13 cards. Four cards here are left over. They'll go back to the box. They won't be needed. In addition, each of the five areas has two face down scar tokens, one face up, leaving three here left over. And you take these, toss them in the box, and they won't be needed. This is the full moon. This is the blood moon. These are going to go off a little bit to the side over here, maybe. And then I'll talk about them in just a little bit. As Lone Wolves is a trick taking game, let's first take a look at the cards that we have here. Now there are 30 cards in the game. There are five suits as depicted here. So one, two, three, four, five. Each suit has a little icon, making it colorblind friendly. And there'll be six cards for each suit. The cards range from seven to two and not six to one. And that's because on the back of the cards are all have a value of one. And this is the lone wolf. And that's how you could have multiple lone wolves. Now we're going to start off with Link. And we're going to look at Link's hand. And look at the cards that Link has. Now you'll notice that the cards range from two to seven. They all have their little colorblind friendly icon. But the twos and threes have additional icons here. Now what this means here is that the two is greater than the seven. Therefore, if someone plays a seven, I can play this two, and then I will win. Kind of like a strategic kind of mechanic here. This three has a unique symbol on it, and in fact, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and look at all our cards. I think this six looks pretty good here. I'm gonna take this six, and I will place this anywhere on the bottom here. And I don't have to place this in the matching area. I can place this anywhere where I want to contend. And let's say I'm going to go here into the forest. Now Mega Man has to follow suit. So Mega Man's going to take his hand. Look at the cards he has. Well, he has a seven. That'll clearly let him win. He must follow. And then there's a two. So the question is, well, does Mega Man want to win the trick or lose the trick? I think in this case, Mega Man wants to win the trick and he has to decide where he wants to win. Now over here in the cave is worth 12 honor points. You can see that these are honor points where each of the areas are worth. So six, six, seven, eight, and 12. They are completely randomized throughout the setup. And let's have Mega Man take his seven and place it here. He wins, Link loses, and this is gonna flip over and become a value of one. 
Now, Link has a choice between one, two, or three, any of these three tokens. And he's going to take one of these three tokens and place it into any of the five areas, including where he lost. So let's say he's going to take this. Hmm, we'll take this one, flip it over. Oh, and it's flip the hex. So he's going to go over here. Let's say he's going to go over here to flip this one. And then this hex is going to flip. So it will no longer be worth a 12. It's going to be worth seven points, seven honor points. And that's going to go here. Now, because Mega Man won the trick, Mega Man keeps the lead, and Mega Man's going to go again. And Mega Man's going to look here at all his cards. Uh, Mega Man thinks, well, Mega Man knows that he has a 7, and he has the 6. So he knows that Link doesn't have the 7, so he's going to place this 6 somewhere where it's going to be advantageous for him. So let's say that is worth 7 points. Let's say he's going to place it here, so he's going to win this area. Now, Link has to follow suit, so Link has to play red. Looks like he's not going to win, so Link is going to take this three, and the three has a very unique power, which I mentioned earlier. So let's say Link is going to place this three here. Now, as soon as he places this three, he's going to take one of these two face down scar tokens and flip them up. He flips up this one. Oh, and now he is going to take one of these tokens and place it anywhere along the path here. So he's going to take this and put it here. Now I'll explain a little bit and what this all means. But essentially, this is how you play the game. You, someone will lead into any of the five areas, someone will play into any of the five areas, and the loser will flip over and take one of the tokens here and place it up to any of the five regions of their choosing. Link is going to keep on playing. Let's say Link really needs to step up his game and trying to get a face-up card. I think Link is ready to play. So he has a few sevens here. He's thinking that he has a two, so therefore he knows that no one's going to beat this seven. So he's going to take this seven and place it maybe here face-up. Now Mega Man's going to have to follow with a seven. Mega Man has a four and a five and a six. He doesn't want to waste his six, so Mega Man is going to take his four. Now the question is, where does Mega Man want to lose? Does Mega Man want to lose here or here? Well, let's say Mega Man wants to lose here, and we'll explain a little bit here. So Mega Man's going to go here. And I do apologize, these would be faced this way because Mega Man would be, you know, he would be facing that way because he's playing against Link. Now he's going to take one of these two tokens here and then place them somewhere. So let's say he's going to take this plus three strength and then place it here onto his side. And play will continue. We'll keep on playing really quickly. So Link won that one. So Link's going to play again. Let's just say that Link uh, plays this seven over here on this side for blue. And therefore Mega Man has to choose to play. Let's say Mega Man doesn't want to spend his two to defeat that seven, Mega Man's gonna place a four. Mega Man's gonna place a four here. So Mega Man plays a four, he clearly loses. And then now this will get moved somewhere else. Oh, that's interesting. And Mega Man's gonna place it here. Now, something interesting happens. Because there are no more Scar tokens in this area, you're gonna take the full moon icon and place it here. Now, green is now Trump, meaning that green will win the suits, if it's, especially if it's off suit. And eventually that will happen again. So let's say we'll keep playing here. So now Link wins, Link will play again. Let's have Link play something low so he could lose. Let's say Link plays this three here. He's gonna flip over this one. Oh, that's pretty interesting. And therefore Mega Man is gonna look, oh, Mega Man has a six. Mega Man is gonna place his six here and therefore win, therefore, Link is going to take one of these tokens and places it here. And then Mega Man will continue to play. Mega Man will take, ooh, Mega Man will take the seven, place it over here. He has to follow suit with this. So let's say he doesn't want to spend this. Let's say he go ahead and takes this four. Obviously four loses the seven. It gets flipped over here. Now this token will leave again. And let's say this token goes to, oh, uh, you want to have strength. So he'll put it over here. Now, 
this area gets the blood moon because this is the second area that is now vacant or void of the scar token. So now green is no longer Trump and blue is Trump. Players will keep playing in this fashion until one area, as soon as it has six cards total, meaning that you could have, let's see, six more cards and have another one face down here. So you have four plus two is six. No more cards can be played into this area. Tokens can still be added to this area from other areas. That's no big deal, but no more cards can be played into this area. Once all five areas have been locked, well then you can compare strength. Now this is really important and I really can't stress this enough. You're gonna have two tokens here. Let's take a look at them. So this red symbol here is strength. This blue one here is honor. This is how you win the game. This is determines who wins that area that you're fighting over. So let's take a look here. So let's say this is the finish. This is six plus six is 12 strength. This is four strength. However, this gives you plus one per card. So that's four plus four is eight. Still less than this. Therefore, Mega Man takes this token and places it on his side. So he wins the honor here. Now we're gonna kind of count up the honor. So this counts up honor. This is one honor per card. So Link will score four honor on this side. And Mega Man, well, Mega Man had this, so that's five honor. If he wins this, that's 11 honor. And that's two honor per card. So 11, 13, 14, 15, 16 honor here to Link's four. You can just score each of the five areas and whoever has the most honor wins the game. Now I do wanna talk about scar tokens. Scar tokens are very important in this game. You will be counting cards and you'll be counting tokens. And let's go ahead and give you a general overview so you can know what to expect. This one here gives you three strength straight off. Now this one will just give you strength to determine who wins that battle area. This one, however, will give you one point per card face up or face down in that area. So if you have three cards, that's plus three strength including the strength that they have on their printed value. Now these have red numbers and they're related to strength. All these blue numbers refer to honor. And let's talk about how honor works. Now this one is if you win the honor token and you remember the honor tokens are shaped like hexagons. If you win the honor token, well then you will gain five more honor in addition to the honor there. This one will allow you to flip the honor token. All the honor tokens are double-sided. So this one is seven on one side and 12 on the other. This will give you two honor per lone wolf that you have. Now remember the lone wolf is the card face down, meaning that every card that you play there that where you lost, you will gain two honor. So think of it as like a valiant defeat. Here you just get one honor per card that you played into the area, face up or face down. This is two honor per face up card in the area. And that's why you see the color pattern here and that's for all the face up, one for each of the different suits. Now you can have multiple uh, of the suits, that just has to be face up. This is three honor per two, three or four card that you have face up in that area. Now, before I do continue to my final thoughts, I do wanna show you uh, some of the honor tokens. So you have 12s here, 12s are double-sided and on the other side of the 12 is a seven. Also, you have sixes here and the sixes on the other side are tens. And the last one is the eight, and the eight on the opposite side is a nine. And there's even a line underneath the nine to let you know it's nine and not six. I also do wanna point out that the full moon and the blood moon also have honor points on them. So the full moon is five points if you win that area that has a full moon, and the blood moon is three honor points if you happen to win that area with the blood moon. So where do I fall on this? I definitely like this. If you go to BGG, I rank this as a nine, right off the bat, because I love Four Clans Conflict. I went into this thinking that it was just gonna be a reskin, uh, maybe even a, a re-theme, if you will. But what I got was something that was a lot more nuanced, a lot more layered, and had a lot more brain power put into the game. Now, I could play like three games of Four Clans Conflict right, off, right after each other, boom, boom, boom. But I can't do that with this one. And I really, really like that. 
And I'll, let's go ahead and, and break this down. Because I think if you come into this game looking for a Four Clans Conflict, you might be disappointed. Because part of the appeal of a Four Clans Conflict was that it was just stripped down, very simple, very easy mechanics with a lot of subtleties in that gameplay. This has all those subtleties and more. Now, I do want to say that the first few times that I played uh, Lone Wolves, I was playing incorrectly. And that's because I didn't understand the difference between strength and honor. And they are two very different concepts. And you really need to understand that to play the game to the best of its ability. Strength just determines who wins that battlefield. Honor is how you win the game. And you don't even have to win any of the five areas. If you could lose all five areas and you could still win the game with honor. And I, it is possible, I have seen it happen. It was mind blowing. I did not expect to lose in that fashion. I also wanna mention the board. Now the board, when you first get your copy and you open it up, the board is gonna be quite stiff and you're gonna to have to bend it to your will. You could put a book on it, it's not gonna do anything. You're gonna to have to bend it the other way to where it's kind of like uncomfortable in your soul to bend a board that way, but eventually it will and it'll lay flat. You play it enough times, it will lay flat and loosen up. But getting to the core of this and why I really like this. In most trick-taking games, you are counting cards. At least that's what the, the best players in trick-taking will do. Uh, some of my friends don't like trick-taking games and I ask them why and they say, I, don't, I, don't, I, can't, I can't be bothered to count cards. And I understand that. But this is a game that's asking you to count cards. It's asking you to count strength. It's asking you to count uh, honor tokens. It's asking you to count cards for you to consider about trump, not just once, but twice in the game. You're also counting like the, the scar tokens that I'm mentioning. You're calculating which, and then you multiply all of that by five because you're also keeping track of which areas you're planning to lose and which areas you're planning to win. And all of that together is really taxing on the brain. There are some quite fascinating combinations that you can pull. And if you're looking for a scar token, maybe it's there in the game, maybe it's one of those three tokens that's in the box. And so you're trying to count the odds of the face down tokens that are in play. Now, there's a lot going on there and usually after one game, I am done and I'm ready for something else. That's not to say that I don't really, really enjoy the game. Now, there is one critique that I've heard from some people and they'll say that they didn't like Four Clans Conflict because it's less about trick taking and more about the area control. And I, to some degree, I think that's fair, but I think they really missed uh, part of the core mechanic of Four Clans Conflict. Now, with Lone Wolves, it definitely does feel that way because you have all, all those strength tokens, you have all those stress tokens, you have five areas now, not just four, and you're counting cards, and it kind of feels that the trick taking is a little bit on the back page there. But you have games like Arcs coming out now where it is just giant space opera, and trick taking is just one of the many mechanics in that game. You can't have a game that isn't focused on trick taking be a success. And I think Lone Wolves is a success. And I've gotten to the point now while I'm playing this game multiple, multiple times uh, with different people and sometimes uh, multiple times with a certain friend of mine and we're able to see certain combinations and really push hard for them. And it's interesting how when you play with a dedicated opponent, there's a shorthand that you develop with them. And I can kind of guess what they're leaning towards and what they're not. And it adds this extra layer to the game that it was not expecting. And this is a game that I think is really important if you, that you would like if you are not just a trick taking fan, but a big trick taking fan. And if you really like area control, I think combining those two together and counting all those cards is something that's far meatier than I was expecting. I was not expecting a game this heavy. Now, I do think that some people will feel that the game is overdeveloped, but I do stress that if you give this game a chance and you play it at least like two or three times to really see all those hidden subtleties and all those hidden layers, I think Lone Wolves is one of the best games from Asia this year. And I know I recently made a list about that and I think that Lone Wolves is gonna be on that list in a year to come. And I will say this about Lone Wolves, it's a game that I'll be playing five years from now. I think it's that good.
Once again, everyone, my name is Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. Are you going to Gen Con? I'm going to Gen Con. I'm going to be at booth 3035. That's the Busy at Games booth. Look for the giant frog in the air and you'll find me there. Please stop by, say hi. I would love to chat with you. I love games, but I love gamers more. And I'll see you in the next episode.